So hello everybody and welcome to yet another exciting, uh, in, in, enthralling episode of the Case Broadcast. So you're here with me, uh, Patrick Twitchett, and... You're also here with me, Melvin Manning. And our excellent guest today, Mr... Owen Williams. Hello. Excellent. Thank you. Right. So we're going to talk about what's a sales funnel today and why does a business need it and who can build it welcome to the case broadcast brought to you by the team of case mastermind where you can be part of a mastermind group for more information visit our website casemastermind.co.uk First of all, I want to introduce our guest, Owen. We've known Owen for quite some time. He's already been on one of the case broadcasts. Mm-hmm. He's, he's one of our first to do do a second round. There we go. So um, I'll let Owen tell you um, a little bit about himself um, in, in under in under 60 seconds, if we can, Owen. Um, okay. And what do you do? All right. Over okay, to you. fantastic. So uh, let me first elaborate on my name because I'm very proud of this. It's actually Owen Henri Clewellyn Lalanarina Williams. Five names representing my heritage. Uh, I was born in Paris <laughs> to a Welsh father and a Malagasy mother. Um, I have uh, kept the tradition going with my three sons. They all have five names as well, each to represent their French heritage as well. Wow. Um, so that aside, I am a career salesperson. Uh, I've worked in sales, wow, since my first sales job was probably selling ice creams, actually, uh, as a summer job when I was 15. Um, I've sold windows whilst I was at college, which was, uh, sold timeshare. Um, and then as of 2004, I've worked, uh, worked in the IT sales industry and then from 2020 set up Dreamer and Dreamer is a B2B sales consultancy working with businesses and individuals to essentially help them achieve better sales outcomes, which will give them the actual outcomes that they need for their businesses or their careers. Excellent stuff. And do tell us where the um, the origins of the name Dreamer as well. Are. Okay, so Dreamer is in homage to my parents. It's a portmanteau of Dragon and Lima, um, which represent their heritage. So the Dragon, the Welsh Dragon, uh, and the Lima, uh, which is um, indigenous to Madagascar. Uh, so that's, uh, that's representing my parents there. Sadly, they've been Wow, they've been dead a long time now, eight years or something. Uh, cool. um, and yeah. yeah, I came up with the name when I wrote them a poem for their 25th wedding anniversary. So that was 16 years ago. <clears throat> but at the time, I was employed with uh, another business. And so I didn't have any need to, for, for, to apply it in, in any kind of business capacity. But then when it, it became clear I was going to set up my own thing, the name immediately came back to mind. And, uh, yeah, and so it's in homage to my parents. And then obviously there are some uh, some marketing uses for dreams, etc. you know, helping people realise dreams, etc. Cool. Excellent stuff. Right. Brilliant. So we want to talk about this uh, sales funnels yep. and what why do businesses need them and who who can build build that sales funnel as well. So um, I think it's very important. So I think to start us off, and I know, you know, we've got to push right in, Owen, because you know me, I'll, I'll talk forever, but Melvin, like, hits me. He, he's got a virtual stick, <laughs> even though like it looks like we're set apart. There's a, there's a little stick comes around the back of my head yeah, yeah. in the broadcast. Wow. He'll start doing this. <sighs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he no, will I'll, I'll, I'll start doing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not whilst I'm speaking. <laughs> hey, well, he has a go-go gadget clock that comes out of his pork well, pie hat that he wears. I'm, well, I'm, I'm feeling I'm, I'm feeling very uh, very sort of like uh, estranged from the pair of you as uh, I seem to be the only one with hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a brag on. Yeah. There we go. We're the we're the vi- virile ones, aren't we, Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I've never, I've never ever heard Patrick go under the the, the banner virile. <laughs> That's a well-known fact. He's That's never used news. that. He's never used that hashtag before. Yeah. <laughs> right, there you now, go. Mo- moving on from Melvin yeah, and yeah. I's personal insults, uh, <laughs> let's move move now to the so the root of the topic, which is Owen. What is a sales funnel? Mm, yeah, important to to make this clear because I see very often and it can lead to confusion which is unhelpful the interchanging yeah. of the use of a sales funnel and a sales pipeline yeah and quite often people will refer to one as the other and the other as the other um so for me and I'm, I know I'm not alone in this a sales funnel is um basically documenting the process of of the journey from a lead so a lead is a company or an individual who may have a need for the product or service that i want to supply to them so they are a lead and they start at the top of this funnel which is a visual uh thing top down as you would look at as a funnel typically and they start at the top of this funnel, which is wide open. It's uh, the awareness phase of the engagement. Yeah. So I have identified this business or an individual as someone who has a potential need for whatever it is I can offer. And I need to now start trying to make them aware of me and our business. And so they sit in this top stage of the funnel, the awareness stage. And then basically, as they move through their journey all the way down through the funnel, which funnels down, uh, there are various stages. There's a very traditional four stage funnel, um, which has an acronym AIDA, A-I-D-A, Awareness, Interest, Decision, Action. There are various permutations, versions of that, but essentially... The funnel represents the journey from a lead going at the very top of it to being aware, being made aware of me as a potential provider. And as they go through, they become qualified as definitely needing the product or service is what I offer. Then they show some interest in actually wanting to engage with me as a potential provider of that product service. And then the final stage is that they're taking action. We are making them a customer. Um, and so that's where the funnel it's represented. It's, it's to, to, to align with prospecting new business development. Yeah. yeah. Um, and quite often, as I was said, right at the beginning, people refer to that as a pipeline. And to be honest, yeah. I, <laughs> I have done numerous times as well, but for me, the difference, a funnel represents the journey from a potential customer to becoming a customer. And then the pipeline, which is a horizontal uh, visual uh, diagram, represents then when they are a customer and the business opportunities they have as a customer. Yeah, and the various stages that you then okay. go through once they are a customer and you know that they have further opportunities, tracking the various stages of those opportunities until they become closed business. Yeah, so to get the the images in perspective, we've we've got the funnel yep. coming down and fi- pu- pushing people into this smaller pipe, and then mm-hmm. once they're there, that's then pretty much like the add-ons or the upsells, the pipeline of what you can do along their journey once you've got them through the funnel and into the pipe, basically. Into the pipeline that was, it becomes then a horizontal a visual diagram, yeah. yeah. And, and the okay. reason it funnels is because you start at the top and in simple terms, you're putting in a load of data into uh, your database, however it is you might do, yeah, and you're looking to try and engage with these people to start qualifying them as needing your services. And in that process, you will get, told not interested don't want to ever speak to you you will get you will find out that they are unqualified for your product or service and so subsequently that initial wide base 
as it goes through the, to the next stage of interest, not everybody goes through it because people are jumping out, you know, as for those points. They're not interested. They're unqualified. Um, and then that keeps on funneling down. You might have somebody who's interested, but then the timing's not right. And so they stay mm-hmm. in that interest phase, you know, and then they're moving down. And those who then the timing's right, they're to, you know, making decisions. And then it goes down to action. Yeah, so it's almost filtering as well. So it's exactly. like a funnel with with layers of filters to filter people out of various stages, isn't it, really? Yeah, and the idea or, or an idea of that is that you can track or you should track the activities at the various stages to help you understand how to improve. Because the idea being, in an ideal world, you at the very top, are putting in data that in an ideal world would funnel without filtering. Everything you put in the top suddenly goes goes through the stages and everything becomes a customer. That is an ideal world scenario, doesn't happen. But what you're looking to achieve is reduce the kind of time wasted at the top end of the funnel working on leads that were never going to be qualified for your service. And so that becomes, and you need to be able to track that and how best you're engaging with them, what channels, what methods you're using, what's becoming effective at pushing people, businesses through the various stages as quick as possible. Um, And so, yeah, you need to be able to monitor the activities at each stage to help identify how to improve. Oh, yeah, whilst so, always <clears throat> filling the funnel. Uh, Owen, <clears throat> at Dreamer, does Dreamer yes. have its own funnel or does it use either? Uh, we have we we have used either, and <laughs> in the last few months, I have, and this will tie into something I said earlier. We we're uh, creating our own funnel, Dream. Yeah. So, so, we, so what what are the various levels and timelines that you go through this process? Uh, using Dream or just using Ada? Well, listen, we're talking about Owen Williams and Dreamer here. We're not talking yeah. about business coaches and other kind of scenarios that go outside of you. So in the Dreamer world, please, God, lots of people, they're watching this and they're thinking, this is a switched on guy. Now, what we what, what are we going to do for them? What's Dreamer going to deliver? What's the process? What is your funnel? Yeah, okay. So we are applying the funnel to every outsourced sales campaign that we work on. So the primary offering of Dreamer is and has been for 2023 and will continue to be outsourced sales, where our clients engage us to generate new inquiries for them. Yeah. And the services that we are working on building their funnel, we are maintaining all of that engagement until they get to the bottom end. And at that point, we then set up a meeting between the fully qualified prospect, because that's where they change. They change from a lead, they become a prospect, yeah, as they go through the funnel. We set up that meeting for our client, and that's the service that we are delivering. So we are using the funnel um, for every campaign. And what we are tracking is, right, first off, how many leads are going in at the top? Where do we source that data from? That's the first things we're tracking, yeah? And how quickly are we getting through the initial attempts to engage? And what channels are we using? Primarily, we're using the phone. We are, as of a new campaign starting this month, we are going to introduce uh, email marketing. Um, so we've got for that particular campaign, we've got a starting database of 1,032 contacts. And for 300 of them, we're going to put them into a separate funnel, if you like, where we're going to start our initial engagement on email. Ooh. And can compare the results to yeah. you know, the, our, our traditional methods of trying to use the phone. Um, And so, yeah, that's an evolution. Every time we start a new campaign, we look at previous campaigns. How can we evolve what we're doing in this one? You know, and typically it's, again, looking at the funnel. Right. Let's look. How many 
did we put in at the top end? You know, how long did it take us to then get through all the initial engagement? And what have we then subsequently got as a percentage in the next phase? And, and you apply yeah. the same logic, you know, right, those people that are in this phase, how many have we moved on to the next phase? How long did that typically take? What methods do we use to engage with them? Um, and it's, it's, it's the ongoing analysis and review of each of our processes and our stages to, to understand, right, that hasn't worked so well. We thought it was a great idea as, a, as a, a, an, an attempt to engage with a group of people. Hasn't worked. Why didn't it work? Let's improve for the next time. Um, so time back to your actual specific question, Melvin. If I remember, you asked actual timelines, yeah? Typical yeah. timelines. <laughs> yeah. So the timeline, obviously, I understand will vary. However, typically, a project usually takes on you know, however long it takes or there is a set timeline. Um <clears throat> Based on the, so we have had, we've been running five campaigns since uh, February 2023, yeah? So the data is, uh, there is data there to look at, but I do also accept it's it's not really that mature and, and uh, detailed. What we are finding is that we are typically, typically booking meetings within four months of starting a campaign. Um, now, some might hear that and think, well, God, I, I see everywhere over LinkedIn people promising to book me meetings within a couple of weeks. Uh, and the difference between what we do and a lot of other lead generators, because that's kind of generic description for us, is that we are controlling that engagement until we know that there is genuine interest, they are genuinely fully qualified as per the parameters of, of the campaign, which are different for each campaign, and they want to be set up with a meeting. Yeah? yeah, We could quite easily set meetings up at an earlier stage of the funnel where we don't know that they're fully qualified. We know that there is a potential need. We're not necessarily sure when they're speaking with the right people. And we could set up that meeting, but that's not the service we're offering. We're offering a more elaborate service where we book a meeting, you know you're speaking with the right person, that they are wanting to speak with you. They have an opportunity. They have a need. It's within a particular time frame. And so that's why our process will take longer. And fine, all our clients uh, uh, understand that because they only pay us once they've had a meeting that we don't operate on a retainer basis. Ah, and that's that's good to hear as well, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah, very good. Um, okay. Okay, so tell us, Owen, why does a business actually need this? You know, there's probably people listening, hopefully, that, that, you know, are business owners or work within a business. Why does their business need this? Okay. I have traditionally, many, many years, always said every business new, needs new business. Yeah. It's the blood, lifeblood of, of every business. However, over the last year, I have spoken with numerous businesses who genuinely aren't interested in taking on any more clients. You know, they have built a base and it provides them a steady income. Their, their resources are capped out. They don't need any more new clients. Fine. We're not the right people to speak with for them. But for every other business that has ambitions to grow or recognizes that they will sometimes lose customers for reasons yeah. in their control or outside of their control. Mm -hmm. You know, businesses get acquired by other businesses every single day of the week. And you may have mm -hmm. a really good relationship with one customer, but if they get then acquired by another business and that business has different relationships, you lose that business for reasons that you have no control over. Yeah. So 
developing on a regular basis new opportunities from new potential clients is very important to a large majority of businesses. And so the funnel is part of the process for having that attitude, that understanding that most businesses need to constantly be working on new business opportunities. If only just to ensure that they stand still as a business and can replace business that they might lose. But for the businesses who have ambitions to grow, of course, they are regularly needing to find new clients. <clears throat> for the businesses that their product or service is a one-off transaction, of course, they need to constantly find new clients every single day. Yes. Um, yeah. And so the funnel then is, is, is part of the process of having that culture. Yeah, and it's a means for being able to processify how you're going about developing new conversations with new potential clients. Did you just make a word up then, are we? Processify, I know, as it came out, I thought that sounds <laughs> that sounds right, but we'll, what, we'll, what's we'll the alternative here? We'll we'll run it by our resident dictionary, Melvin. Yeah. Did, did, how, how, I, I find that quite a quirky word, actually. Processify. Well, That's a good one. As, as you probably have gathered, <laughs> I'm just looking it up now on. on ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the but computer you... says no. Really? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Well, I think it's a good word myself. Processify, but you know what I meant. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, you know, to, absolutely. To, to, to build because we're just that's because we're just simple souls. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so, so that's why you know yeah. the businesses who have a uh, who have a need to um, <clears throat> to build new clients to to onboard new clients. The funnel is a key part of that process. Yeah, sure, and it's a great monitoring tool as well, isn't it? Because crucial, like you yeah. said, you're, you're, you're creating data off the back of these funnels. So it's giving you analysis. It's, and it's like you alluded to earlier, you know, you're, you're, you're splitting a campaign, aren't you? You're doing one, we're going to send an email first, then follow up with our usual process. And then, or the other way, we're going to start with our usual process on the phone. And then you can get that data and go, well, hey, look, we had a, a certain percentage more success rate when we did it this way. So it's brilliant because yeah. that, that's forever informing your business how it best functions with its and its ideal candidates. And when you get to the other end of the funnel and you've got those ideal candidates, I would imagine you can then analyze the journey that they took through and you can see the majority of what journey they came through that funnel as well. Absolutely. That's yeah. exa exactly that. You, know, you can get really granular on the analysis yeah. to understand, you know, yeah, where did that data initially come from? You know, what was it that we did that helped move them through a various stage? You know, how how can we make this process more efficient? You know, what resources did we need to do this? How many people were working on it? Yeah, you know, for a business owner, being able to understand that kind of detail at a granular level is for the right type of business owner really useful because it can yeah. help in their resource planning, you know, then their business forecasting, you know, if they're putting together a business plan that might require trying to seek external investments, being able to kind of approach an investor and say, right, we know having used this funnel that, you know, if we pour in 2000 at the top end, typically it might take us three months to get, you know, 50 down the bottom end, um, and we have five people working on that. They cost us a hundred grand, and the bottom result is that we get twenty new customers, fifty customers. You know, if we close ten percent of those, they might make us a million. It all this kind of uh, yeah. a detail is really useful, but it all comes back to having this process, which you are able to analyze. Yeah, instead of just winging it, instead of going right, uh, you know, oh, today I'll just um, yeah, I'll, I'll look up on Google um, people who need mugs, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm going to try and make some calls, and yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll record that in Excel, uh, or I might even just write down some notes on paper, 
and and then oh two days later oh, I've got a bit of time I'll do it again. Those yeah if that's your approach to prospecting, you're 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 going to struggle to make anything successful consistently. And also if you're bringing in new people into the business, there's no process for them to follow. You know, it's how do you generate new business? Oh uh, let me check my notes. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If you can onboard people and be like, right, this is how we do it. Typically follow these processes, allowing for some flexibility and creativity. That's key. Yeah, you know, especially when you have people involved in the process. If you fully automate it, and there are sales funnels out there that can be fully automated, it depends on the nature of what the business does, offers, and who they're targeting. But I do know of some sales funnels where there's there's no human interaction. It's all automated, yeah? Wow. Um, so if that works for you, fantastic. Your resource cost is extremely low. I don't know what software you're using to do, to tie that all together. Um, but yeah, yeah that, it's that ability to have a process that you know, others coming into your business can follow. Um, if people are involved, you do need to allow a degree of flexibility and creativity because you don't want robots you know um no yeah. no yeah. okay and talking of robots i mean it, it's getting worrying now because i've seen people um demonstrating ai um on linkedin and various places where you can actually choose a face and it can even talk with your voice and look like a person talking and it even generates what it's <laughs> going to say it's like it is you know, coming to that stage now, isn't it? But you still just can't beat, you know, human conversation, and that yeah. that you just you can't you can't get around that. AI cannot have a conversation to a degree that a human being can take it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think I think you're referring to the the Tesla sales rep. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, I've seen other people using it. In fact, funnily enough, Chris Williams has been demonstrating it on. Uh, I know he's been demonstrating it um, to a group I'm part of. But uh, yeah, he literally got an avatar that wasn't him, but it spoke in his voice, and it was just talking and, and going through a load of stuff. It was all AI generated. Unbelievable. Yeah, but there's there there was there's there's something recently happened maybe two weeks ago where. And it's been posted a lot on LinkedIn. Uh, an AI generated sales rep supposedly working for Tesla called a guy in America and and the the the, the recording of the call has been posted everywhere. And the voice, yeah, you, you wouldn't necessarily get at all that the, it was uh, uh, not a human. Right. Um, however, there were still gaps in the, in the, in the kind of conversation. There was the pauses were were still a bit too long you know you yeah. can obviously yes yeah, us uh <laughs> this is a computer trying to work out what to say next and <laughs> and the yeah. conversation the conversation was very kind of linear there weren't any curveballs thrown by the other person yeah and so that then enabled the ai bot to have you know what what seemed like a standard conversation but that's the that's the 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 hurdle is the curveballs that human beings throw up. Yeah. You know? Um and then how will an AI bot be able to deal with those effectively? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, so I think a simple question that we throw it. Oh, so where do you live then? <laughs> you know, simple <laughs> things like that would just completely expose it, wouldn't it? Because yeah, just, yeah. It, you know, unless you pre-program it with with uh answers for that okay now that's cool so i could so we can see now why a business actually needs it so so i mean who can build these funnels well anyone can build them anybody who's involved in in so let me expand, expand that anybody who's involved in developing new business opportunities yeah uh, so that could be a salesperson, it could be a sales leader, it could be a business owner. Um, but anybody who has an interest or has a need for doing that should build their own funnel. And as I said right at the beginning, it's a very traditional four-stage one, ADA, A-I-D-A, awareness, interest, decision, action. 
very traditional, been around for quite a while, and it's still very representative of a typical journey of a lead becoming a customer. And so that works fine. Um, as I did also say, we, we, we uh, start to build our own one, Dream. It's n- not really too dissimilar from the, st- the stages, just different names, but they are essentially representing similar stages. You're right at the top. We need to start making you aware of us. You know, then you move through, you're reacting to our engagement. You're then going to endorse it as, as valid. You're then taking action. And for us, the M uh, represents monitor. Yeah. So once we have onboarded you as a mm. customer or we've connected you with our client, so we've uh, um, you've gone through their funnel, we're then monitoring how that activity is going from that point and seeing what else we might be able to help you with, yeah? So that's our funnel. Yeah. But back to the actual question, who could build it? Anybody who's who's actively involved in developing new business opportunities, um, the challenges that, uh, that can happen when building a funnel and quite often when non-sales leaders maybe look to uh, put together a funnel process is that they sometimes fail to consider or build it from the actual perspective of the most important people in the funnel the lead you know the lead who then can work to become a prospect they are the most important (laughs) person to to consider building your funnel from their perspective yeah Uh, and 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 it can happen that some again non sales uh leaders or business owners are building it from their own perspective as to what's important to them and maybe not taking into consideration the journey of the lead and if at any stage in that funnel the journey is challenging is difficult for the lead and then they bail out, you need to evolve that. You need to amend it. You need to review yes. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Removing um, the obstacles or the friction. Removing the obstacles. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so when building a funnel, really the strong advice to really, really consider from the perspective of your target audience, you know, and how if you were in their shoes, what would you react well to? Or trying to understand even better, can you get any research done that might help you understand, you know, from your target audience, how best they might react to certain elements of your funnel? Um, As you build that, anybody who does really does need to be prepared to review, analyze and adapt it meticulously. That's a word. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm, no, not I'm, sure not sure. I'm not sure if there's so many L's. Yeah, I did think that as I said it, meticulously. <laughs> Metic- there you go, meticulously. <laughs> yeah. um, but that's absolutely key. You you have to be open to, to recognising. You'll build it, you'll start building it with the best intent, hopefully. But you will start to find out, okay, we thought that would work. That's not going to work. Now you can either continue trying to force it, that uh, square peg into the round hole <laughs> or take, sit back and go, right, what do we need to do differently to achieve a better outcome, uh, to, which is essentially to help more people or help to push more people through the funnel. And that, that's an yeah. ongoing thing. You know, you build your funnel, you've got to review, you know, there's a, there's, one of our posters we've got on the wall in the office here, you can't control what you don't measure. Yeah, Absolutely crucial. You can't. Well, you know. I've, I've got a bit of a curveball for you now, Owen. Okay. Oh, this is, this is, is this to prove that Owen's not an AI? <laughs> <isn't he? laughs> this is to prove that we're not going down one channel here. Yeah, obviously yeah. The funnel's the funnel, and that's brilliant. Mm. Streamer, obviously, we've got the back, the back history. Um, we've got your family history. We've got all of the elements that make Owen an incredibly 
terrific man. We've got obviously all the elements that say that Dreamer can do a phenomenal job. However, how do I know? What is your, let's say your, uh, your case history? What is your benchmark? What is, why would I want to come to you? What gives you the talent, the right, the way forward to say to me, hey, you're not quite doing, you're not quite, you're not quite doing it, but you know, the, the way that I would uh, recommend, this is what I would do. How, how did you come about this talent? Oh, how did I come about the talent? Um... I mean, you, you're not, you're not 18 anymore. Very true. Yeah, very true. Yeah. So, yeah, worked in sales. I mean, the, the quick, quick background, as I said, started working in sales at a very young age. And I think just my confidence and ability to engage with people stemmed from playing sport, playing football at a decent standard, you know, and I was <clears throat> at school, I was the best footballer locally, I was one of the, the best. And so, you know, that afforded me a certain level of kudos, which, don't get me wrong, as a youngster, I certainly did... Uh, did uh, uh, embrace and uh, probably had a big, I, big. I would give you the word. Go. I would give you the word confidence. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but it stemmed from there, you know. And then, then when I moved abroad, I spent a few years living abroad, living independently. That then exposed me to more people. So I have a, a natural ability to engage with people of from all sorts of different walks of life, all different ages, different countries, uh, different cultures. I have used professionally the phone to engage with people for 20, 23 years. Um, so you know, I know that that doesn't by default make me good at, at, at it, but it also, on the other hand... <laughs> <laughs> I've built a lifestyle. I've built a career. I support my family from doing this. Yeah. Yeah. So, would it be fair to say you've had certain successes? I mean, I'm trying to draw it out of you, Owen. Yeah, I have had certain successes in my, in my sales career. Mm. My barometer of success has changed as I've aged. You know, of course, when I was I say, of course, when I was uh, junior, <clears throat> the barometer of success was all the materialistic things, wasn't it? Yeah. Loads of money, the flash car, nice watches, sharp, sharp suits, you know, flashy shoes, all of that. That was the barometer of success. But then as I've got older and I have a family, I have three sons, I have a wife, I am the primary earner. Um, my barometer of success has changed. Sure, I still like nice things, but it's more about, <laughs> you know, providing for my family and, and, um, <clears throat> and making sure they're happy and healthy, uh, well-fed, uh, with three boys being uh, well-fed is certainly now <laughs> something I'm, it's costing us a lot. Um, so yeah, yeah. And of course, yeah, I've, I have achieved what I would determine a lot of success in my sales career, but I've still got miles to go and you know, I'm on a, now a, a new path. Dream is going to be three years old as, as of the end of this month. Wow. Um, and, you know, we're on a path and, and I have a version of success for what that will look like once we achieve it. Um, but tying, going back to that very original question, you know, what would, what, why would you as a potential customer use Dreamer? Mm -hmm. um, well, first off, the, the need would have to exist. You know, you would have to have either an issue with attracting new customers um based on whatever processes you currently follow or you don't even do it and you want to start doing it yeah so first off though either one of those needs has to exist how we become aware of each other to understand that typically client potential clients are coming to dreamer asking about our outsourced sales as a, as a result of referrals word of mouth Sometimes LinkedIn, we have had a couple of clients who say, oh, I've seen your stuff on LinkedIn. You know, uh, we've had one inquiry through the website, 
one. Uh, <laughs> so my website isn't quite yet working as a lead magnet. Um, uh, but you know, there, there has been one. But primarily, it's it's, it's word of mouth and, and referrals, which obviously then is yeah, is advantageous because you know, half of the sales process is is done, isn't it? I'm not needing to put myself on that person's radar. They've been advised to, to contact us. Then we have to make sure they generally have a need. I have to understand what their processes are, but the the message is 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 it becomes quite simple. What we do is we take all of that grunt work away from your business. We go through all of that rejection. We go through all that top level funnel activity, you know, the awareness stage. You know, we build the database, and it's never perfect to start off with. And so we have to sift through that. We have to make those calls. We have to identify and, and get people out of the funnel, which takes up time. We do that for you. We control all of that engagement. And ultimately, we only book meetings with you, as I said earlier, with people who are genuinely interested, fully qualified. And at that point is when you pay us. If we don't achieve any results, i.e. we don't book you any meetings, it doesn't cost you anything. Yeah. So we don't sell on yeah. the price, but what we are selling on is on de-risking working with us for our clients. Lots of other lead generation businesses typically work on a retainer model. Email marketing, email uh, lead generators only, it's a different model. They might have a retainer, but it can be low cost. But for other ones who are traditionally picking up the phone, using social media, booking meetings, they typically work on a retainer model. Pay us anywhere between two to six grand a month, minimum six month engagement. And we are aiming to book X amount of meetings for you. Some achieve that, some exceed those expectations. I've seen several that don't achieve those. And there's rarely, if ever, any compensation for the client. It's, well, we've tried. You still owe us the money. Yeah. So... So yeah. for us, th th there's a big message in that part for the time being. You know, we de-risk it. We're going to work on your behalf. Obviously, our intent is to book meetings because we don't earn anything from it if we don't. But if we don't, there is no cost to you. All you've lost is time. Mm. But there is also still a funnel being built, even though we might not be, uh, you know, we are still creating a database identifying who has a need for what you do, who are the right people to engage with. And if at any point a client wants to pull out of the campaign, they can get the database back off us, of course, uh, and, and, and do with it what they will if they want to. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. we de-risk it for our clients. Um, we don't guarantee results. We guarantee we're going to try our absolute best to get results because, obviously, we only win if our clients win. Yeah. Our strap line is that, um, sorry, the mission statement is that we achieve results for our clients because our lives depend on it. And the hour is a combined hour. Our is dreamers, livelihoods, and our clients' livelihoods to represent that we're in this together. We're building a partnership, yeah? And... You are wanting to work with Dreamer because you are needing to generate new inquiries for your business because you have ambitions to grow the business, your own personal ambitions as a business owner dependent on achieving that. So they're kind of, it may be a bit dramatic, but your live livelihood does depend on us achieving results, as yeah. it does for us as well. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really good. And you touched on something there where you said, you know, one of your – the main things that you have got to commit to it is time. But really, if you're outsourcing it anyway to a company like yourself, it's not your time. Your your is being committed there. It's it's the other company or whoever you're outsourcing it to. It's it's their time, isn't it? So Look, they're, they're, very true. Yeah, they're, they're what using I, their I just, time to generate it for you, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what I what I meant by that is that yeah, if we have a client who. And this actually probably wouldn't happen because if we get a client, they're like, look, we need, we need some new inquiries. And I've had this, I've turned this away. Yeah. We need, we need new business. We need, you know, 10, 10 new clients within three months straight away. That's a bit of an alarm bell to me. Uh, well, you know, the clients we work with are actually very forward thinking. And typically 
the majority of them are saying, well, look, we're, we're actually, business is going really well for us. You know, it's been fantastic. Our pipeline for the next three to six months is looking decent. My problem is that the funnel is empty. And so once that pipeline expires, we've got nothing to fill it in. And so the majority of the clients we work with are forward thinking. They're already, they don't leave themselves to get in this crappy situation where they're like, oh my God, I need some new accounts yeah, tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so that then helps us because we're like, great, fantastic, because we can't promise you results overnight. We're going to work on this campaign, going to build this funnel, and it's going to take time. But great, once we start, you know, once we've gone through that high level in, initial intense engagement phase, we're then sifting people through and we're nurturing them. We're nurturing them and we're building up a projective funnel. Excellent. Excellent. Brilliant. Okay, Owen. So um, I think you, you've really sort of explained um, those aspects of it. So, um, yep. and, and I'm going to try and, and bring this to a close. So, so Melvin's before, sort of remotely you know, happy. Before you bring it to a close... Oh, Melvin's dragging this out. I'll just, I'll just <laughs> no, because podcast. because there's, there's there's a structure here. There's a structure here because we've actually got to know Owen a lot better than we did before. And those who are watching and listening are going to hopefully be making their, let's say, decision making processes as to whether we can work with a with a terrific gentleman like Owen. But more importantly, typically, who is your ideal customer? What do they look like? Um, so typically an ideal customer, first off, they have to be selling a product or service B2B. Yeah. That's first off. That's, a, that's a main criteria. Um, they have to have existed for at least three years as a business. Yeah. We are not able to at this early stage for us, um, build brand new brand awareness. Yeah. There has to be some level of existing awareness of their business in their industry yeah um as for the sales function they have to have um processes for how they deal with leads yeah, that's part of our qualification um the business owner uh we obviously need to be engaged with Geographically, um, that they provide their product or service in the, in the UK. As of yet, we don't operate internationally, um, and and for the time being, the ideal scenario is that their product or service is mandatory for their client base. Yeah. So and and as opposed to something that could be perceived as a nice to have, with sure a, a business benefit, but to put that maybe into to a clear specific example, we work with uh, an IT uh, support company who um, supply exclusively to the education sector, and for schools who don't have their own internal IT team, they have to have IT provisions. So, yeah, that mission is relatively simple. We're calling up schools. What do you do for IT? We outsource it. Great. Let's start a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas we work with maybe another uh, provider, um, so web, web design agency. Um, and, yeah, okay, you might argue having a website is mandatory for you, but developing it maybe updating it it's not a mandatory need it could just be perceived as something that's nice to have um so yeah, yeah that's that's something we look at as well we try to understand what is your product service mandatory or could it be a nice to have uh, that's not to undermine the nice to have but an ideal sort of client for us ideal we don't turn away the people who is nice to have by the way it's just you ask the question ideal that their service product service is mandatory for their target client excellent Well, I think that kind of gives you that opportunity now, Patrick, to bring it to a close. Yes, we will. We want to know. We want to know now, Owen. Mm -hmm. um, people that are listening, if they say, oh, I want to get hold of that Owen chap, how are they mm -hmm. going to get hold of you? What's the best and easiest way for them to do so? I'm extremely active on LinkedIn. 
Uh, so you find me there. Yeah, for, uh, I, I, I'm going to put a guess out there, and I'd love to be told otherwise that my spelling of Owen, that I am the only mixed race Owen in the whole wide world. Um, so you shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't struggle to find me. Um, I'll spell it out for, it. for the listeners, please. Just... O W A I N. Uh, and I will get pulled up. Undoubtedly, there'll be a lot of Welsh natives who will go, Well, that's not Owen, that's a Wayne. Because it is a wine in Welsh, yeah. Uh, but however, you can hear from my accent, I'm not Welsh. It was my father. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't, you wouldn't get from my accent. I'm French either, though, would you? But me, je suis né à Paris. Oui, je suis français. Um, oh, are we showing off now, Melvin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, it, it, that, that is a concern. But, it, yeah. but I have to say, he. I mean, speaking from my own experiences, he is incredibly uh, recommendable. He's, 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 a, he's, he's a good egg. Yeah, I can Thank only you. I can only For order sure. um, slugs and ice cream in French. So <laughs> not, not a great diet, to be no, fair. No, not a great diet, no. But yeah, extremely <laughs> active on LinkedIn. Um, and then our website is uh, www.dreamer, which is d-r-e-m-u-r.co.uk. You can contact us through there. Um, I'm not going to give out my mobile on this podcast. Uh, you'll have to work for that one if you really want that mobile. Do, but do, 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 you have a, do you have a business landline, Owen? Oh, we do. In fact, yes, happy to give that one out, Melvin. Thank you. Yeah, 01227 501 311, which actually, as I've just mentioned it, was changed on your recommendation, I do believe, Melvin, yeah? Um, that's that, that's what, what gave me the uh, the kind of that, you know that magical moment to remind you. Yeah, yeah so, that's right. Just yeah. so you could give Melvin an extra plug. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because I had nothing, I had nothing like a good free. plug while you're sitting on the beach watching <laughs> to the yeah. wave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's how you can get hold of me. Excellent, excellent. All right. Well, thanks very much. So, it is um, uh, a, a goodbye from me, Patrick Twitchy. It's a it's a goodbye from me, Melvin Manning. Hopefully, you'll all be having a most wonderful day. Lovely. And from our guest. And it's goodbye from me as well. Thanks very much for having me on. Pleasure. Excellent. Thanks very much, very much, everyone, for listening. Do Try continue it. to... No, Melvin, please, please. Sorry. I have Sorry. to give my grand finale. I forgot so... about your fingers. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. yeah. Fingers. Don't yes. never forget. Oh, no. Well, they, listen they out, listen up and listen in. <laughs> To the right. case broadcast, and we'll yeah. see you there next time. Patrick Thanks and his ma- magic fingers. There you go. <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye bye. To continue to listen out, listen up, and listen in to the case broadcast, do hit the subscribe button to receive reminders of all our new episodes.